who is the true owner of your sexual organ? It's kind of a crazy question, right? I mean, who's ever asked you that before? The thing is, it's an issue that matters quite a lot, and yet we give very little attention to it. Most people think the obvious answer is that they own their sexual organ because, well, it's theirs. So they treat it however they want. And when it comes to sexuality, we are trained from films, music, psychology, pretty much everywhere to simply do as we wish whenever we want with our sexuality. Because again, it's ours. But is it? Is our sexuality just for us? Is sex about taking? Is it about getting as much for yourself as possible? Well, let's think about this from another angle. What about love? Do we experience love by taking it, by demanding it, by expecting it, or by giving it freely without conditions? Real love is given unconditionally because it feels right to serve. Now let's consider that humans were designed to be in a state of love because that's 100% true. When we are emotionally in conflict, we physically and mentally start breaking apart. We get stressed and sick. We clearly weren't designed for that type of life. So if we are designed for love, then our sexuality would naturally be an extension of giving love, not taking. That's how we can be living in a meaningful and powerful relationship with sexuality itself. Given that context, it makes sense that your sexuality isn't for taking, it's for giving, which means it's for others. Your sexuality is for others. Your sexual organ actually is designed for another person, not you. When we tie love and sexuality together, we are meant to live a life filled with meaning that only grows more powerful and meaningful over time. When we are selfish with our love and with our sexuality, we will inevitably isolate ourselves from the connections that are our very purpose for living.